Well, I was down at Limington, York Haven recently, and I got the chance to go out on a boat. But it wasn't my usual fiberglass boat, it was one made of aluminium. Let's check it out. My name is Ross Honey, I'm the founder of the Sea Angling Classic. Uh, it's an event we, we created just over two, two years ago. Uh, it's uh, an event that's going to be running uh, this year out of Portsmouth. It's a catch, photograph and release event with five uh, target species. They're bream, smoothhound, bass, taupe and uh, any of the rays. And uh, the, the way that, uh, that people can participate is it's uh, uh, two anglers on a boat uh, with a maximum of four rods or up to four anglers on the boat but still a maximum of four rods as well. Um, an incredible prize, it's a 745 Game King, fully equipped with, um, this year it's a 300 horsepower engine uh, with the Hellmaster uh, HX joystick control fully loaded with all the Lawrence equipment that's on there uh, with the, the ultimate fishing system, the brilliant trailer that goes with it and uh, it's an extreme, as I said, 745 Game King, a prop offshore boat uh, that's uh, really fit for purpose, it's a really incredible machine. So the boat itself it's made of aluminium uh, and it's made in New Zealand, it's a proper offshore boat, exactly fit for purpose. Key things about the boat are, uh, it's got a, a self-flooding hull, uh, so when you stop it puts a tonne of water in the, in, the, in the hull, which means that it's incredibly good for, for, for when you're drifting. Uh, the live well tank at the back uh, has got a clear front, so uh, you turn that on and uh, you can see the fish in there, that, that, uh, that overflows straight onto, the, onto the, um, the back of the boat. And there's two really good fishing areas, the whole of the back of the boat, in fact, um, just outside by, by where the engine is, that, that turns into a, a fishing gantry. Uh, there's even fishing rods, there's 26 rod holders on this boat, which, uh, which is great. Fridge, um, it's, it's, uh, and there's a two berth cabin at the front as well. So it really is an incredible boat. And uh, when you see it on the shore and see pictures of it, that's just one thing. But the proof of the pudding is going out on the water and testing it. Now just tell me about this self-flooding hull, which I've never heard of uh, before us. I imagine that's like a ballast in an old wooden boat. We've been in Ireland and you know they pull the deck boards up and there's a ton of boulders in there to give it ballast, but that's a displacement hull. So what happens to that water? You stop with the drifting, I get the stability bit, but it, what, does it take like a minute? Do you have to pump out and then to get up on the plane? How does it, how does it empty itself? Now that, that's part of the clever bit. It's uh, the actual basic hull itself is it's a deep V. So the moment you open up the, uh, the, the engine and, uh, and you go off, it literally shoots that tonne of water straight out of the back. And it's got uh, reverse chines on this, which means the deck on the boat is completely dry. Even when, when you're going into really big waves, uh, it means that uh, it's not only comfortable, but at the same time, it means it keeps the deck uh, the deck and those those are sitting there um, totally comfortable. Does the water, it goes through on some, some scoop system through into the hull? Does, what, it, what does it stay in the hull? No. So it's driving through? So, so, no, so as no, the no. boat settles it just fills the what water? What happens, in. basically you'll be able to see it on the other one that's ashore, yeah. um, it's got, there's a big V and the water literally floods in yes. and then, so that's in there yeah. and then um, because literally down here, um, if you look this is, this is where you put ice as well. Yeah. There's a bung in there. Um, so if I undid that, that bung there, yeah. that would water would come up. So, um, so when you're going along, if, um, if let's say that was full up with water, yeah. I undo that bung, literally it just shoots straight out the back. I've got you, yeah. So yeah, that, that's, yeah. And that goes into the same, same area as the uh, as the flooding flooding hull. So you don't have to run with a load of water in here, which would cost you more fuel. No, 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 no that's what I couldn't no. get away. Well, that that's one of the great things about this. I mean, one of the things that I've noticed uh, since I've had this 
is the fact that because you run on a deep V, yeah. um, and it means you can go really fast. I mean, the boat, this boat will do nearly 50 knots. Wow. Um, and, but the fuel economy, uh, I went out the other day, all day fishing, and uh, came back in and went to fill it up. And it was full when I went out, and I literally filled it up here in, in the Yacht Haven. 80 litres of fuel. And I've been out all day, yeah. and I've been cruising at 35 knots. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's... Most boats cruising at 35 knots is an impossibility with a more <laughs> small fishing boat. You get battered to death because with a V-hole you'll go through the waves better. Yes, yeah, exactly. The, the other, other things about this boat um, in terms of how it's been built, because it's literally, it's, it's all welded right the way through. The weld quality on it is, is really, really good. Very, very high quality. And if you look, no matter where you are on the boat, there's really strong grab rails. So literally wherever you go to put your hand, there's somewhere to grab. And it's uh, really, so it's it's really safe. It's sort of built for a battering, as it were. If it, if it could, if it needs to take it, it can do. It is. I mean, in New Zealand, although I wouldn't want to do it, is they they literally just drive them up the shore. So oh, I know, yeah, yeah. So I've seen, li yeah. literally, it's yeah. oh god, I'm not yeah. doing that with this one. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that in South Africa where I've been there. Yeah, yeah, you go straight up it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> speed. Yeah, literally that. So yeah, so that's. Um... So the boat is completely fitted out with low run gear. Yes. And, and the, the actual screen's a big screen there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's got the ultimate fishing system uh, from, from Rantz actually on. So th this is a 16-inch HDS Live. Um, on the, this, this current year's boat, there's a 12-inch uh, HDS Live Pro, but that's also connected to the... Uh, there's a, a Halo 20-plus 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 radar. Um, it's got the sonic sound system. Uh, it's got the, 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 the side scans, down scans, structure sure. scan. It's got the fish scan, that's the one it's, I want. It's literally, everything's on it. Yeah. It really is. So, it's, so there's nothing else that you need. Okay, so we're going to take a little spin out. We're going to go so people know with Limington, we were up the Limington River. Yep. And we're going to come out the marina and just come into the Solent there. Exactly. Look, you can see where I've been today. Just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. going around. It looks like the Bay of Bay of Plenty on the North Island of New Zealand at the moment <laughs> with that blue sky. It does, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm sure we're not going to get a striped marlin somehow. <laughs> we can try, but I don't think we'll, we'll get one today. Uh, there's some, some strange things going on in the Solent. Well, we've got the old um, shark, and we've got shark. the shark that was washed up. Yeah. Yes, yeah. What do you make of that, then? Well, there's been a huge one in Ireland, isn't there? It's 14 feet long. Yeah, that's a freaking Yeah, that is a real piggy. To, to go into create multiple screens, it's really simple. I want to see a chart so I can see where I'm going. Of course, I want to see the sonar, and also I want to see side scan, and I don't know, let's, let's take the put in radar as well. So if I'm happy with that configuration, literally all I do is hit save, and that's it. So that's all up and running straight away then. So to go to any of these particular screens, if I want to uh, control and operate them, uh, so, for instance, with the radar, let's turn that on. So that's now actually going to the radar uh, screen, which then brings up the menu there. So what I want to do is I, I then want to transmit, and as you'll see, that will then turn that on, and uh, that will then be uh, that will then transmit directly. So what that's effectively done is turn the radar on on the whole system here. So if I go to radar, you can see the radar operating. 
with the radar as well, you've got a harbour mode um, and you've got different modes and, and that basically is adjusting the sensitivity of this. These are all the marshes I imagine there, are they? Yeah, what we've got is, look, we've just come up to a post here, uh, which is that post there on the right hand side, and literally directly opposite there's the uh, there's the green uh, green post the other side. So these these are the, be the posts we've got, you can see the ferry directly in front of us, that's here, and then if I, uh, if I zoom uh, out on that, you'll, you'll see that's a quarter of a mile, 400 feet, I have to go the other way. Um, that will then show, obviously, other, so that's one ferry there. That's, that's, that's the another ferry, is it? Or is that, that, that's that's a, exactly oh, a second that ferry one, yeah. there. Yeah, so you can see the boats coming in as well. So you can see those. So really, really important to have, have a good radar system, particularly if you get stuck out in the fog and understand how to use it. In the solar well. busy as well, isn't it? Exactly. But that, that's just that part of it. So when I'm actually out fishing, what I like to do is I like to have the uh, the sonar on and have a, a sonar zoom. So this is a zoom. This is a zoomed in on exactly what's going on here. Um, we're only in just over 14 and a half feet of water. A lot, a lot of water. This is. Um, I, I normally have this on probably 200 kilohertz, which is the frequency. And there we go. There's a load of fish there. So that's a that's a load of fish that we've just gone over so there. We've got the fish on the standard screen, I say, and that's it. And, and, that, and that's zoomed right in. But if if, um, if I if I didn't want to, to have that, I can alter the the, the, the scroll speed of, of all the different features here. But um, if I come back to that uh, and then um, go on to zoom, if I want to come off that, no split, and that will then give you a standard view. see one of the places here Hearst Castle and there is the Shingle Beach now I've never actually walked my fish to the end but we call it Milford Bank or Milford Shingle it goes down oh, quite a long way I don't know how long it is it might be three quarters of a mile might even be a mile now, I fish mostly at the opposite end of that and there could be some decent shore fishing They're out here just off what's called the needles they were having their fishing competition and guys were hoping to get through to one of uh, the competitions called the Sea Angling Classic, whereby you had a chance to actually win one of those aluminium boats. And there's an epic sight, I feel. Look at that. Oh, what a photographer. A fishing boat with the lighthouse of the needles in the background. As many of you weather watchers should know, a lot of the high winds that actually come in the south of England are recorded off the needles. Um, it's just one of those places it's hugely exposed so I'm not surprised and in the winter this is an epic place again for catching big cod yes I know a lot of you say Graham get your head in order mate you need to google those up because they haven't been any caught for a long time but here off the needles is one of the best places to catch them in the winter we generally time of year would be I'm going to say November December January those sort of three months, and they get, or they used to, regularly get 30 pounders out there. Some of the bait you would be using would be either peeler crab if you wanted, if you could afford them, or generally great big jumbo portions of squid, one of the best boats. So there you go, there's somewhere different for you. The Isle of Wight, I've not fished off it, I've fished behind it for thresher sharks, out the back, south of it, but it's a great sight to see.
between those those rocks is brilliant for bass. Oh, there's a nice bit of parking for you, look at that. I mean, where else would you want to leave your boat? I wonder how on earth it got up there. It's been up there some time apparently, and look at the size of the kayak. It is not a small boat at all. So, nifty bit of driving there. I noticed the gentleman who owns the boat doesn't have his fenders out, so I'm guess, guessing that he wasn't actually thinking he was going to come into contact with the Isle of Wight. Well, there you go. A little review of an extremely fast aluminium fishing boat. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Get some of that going as well. We need that boat with some of this. See you next time. And don't forget, check out TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, and have a look in on Mike's Life of Mike new channel. Might be something in there. Pass a few minutes for you as well. See you later.